What's up guys, Justin here with the renderingessentials.com back with another rendering material and texture tutorial for you. So in today's video, we're gonna talk about how to use the tool Materialize, which is a free tool that you can download to create maps on your computer. And we're gonna talk about how to use this to create seamless textures that you can use inside of your renderings. So let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so remember that Materialize is the free program that you can download in order to create maps from photos for your 3D model. So you can use a single photo, and you can use this in order to generate um, all sorts of different maps in here. Well, one of the other things that you can do with this program is you can use it to create seamless textures from textures that weren't previously seamless. So I will link to the downloads page in the notes down below, and you can download this and install it for free. Note that um, according to all the comments I've been getting, this only appears to work at the moment for PC users. So I currently do not have an alternative for maps. Mac, I do apologize for that. So if you remember, the way this program works is you start by loading in your diffuse map. So we're gonna go find a diffuse map. We're gonna jump over to SketchUp real quick and we're gonna look at the image that we're using. So the first image that we're gonna use is this image of bricks. And you can see how what happens is this brick material that you apply to this face, you can see how there's a very pronounced seam in between the different times that this is uh, tiling this image on your face. So remember that your 3D modeling program is basically taking this and repeating it over and over and over again to fill the face. Well, in this situation, this has very pronounced seams that really kind of messes up the realism um, that uh, is currently contained inside of this image. So we're gonna go through it and we're gonna make this so that it tiles a little bit better. So to start off, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go into this slot labeled diffuse map. We're just gonna click on the O button and we're gonna load in our image. So in this case, I have an old mill brick material that I'm going to bring in. And so this is our material that we were using inside of SketchUp. And what we need to do now is before we can tile these maps, we need to create some additional maps. So I'm just going to go in and I'm just going to leave these as kind of defaults. So I'm going to leave, I'm going to create a diffuse map just by clicking on create. And I'm just going to click on the displace option and click set as height map. And then we're going to go in here and we're going to click on create and we're going to create a normal map as well. And so, and so now what we have is we have three different maps in here. Well now, as soon as we added a map, notice that you get the option here for tile maps. So what tile maps does is it allows you to start working on the way this is going to tile when it repeats. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna click on tile maps. And what that's gonna do, and this may look a little bit different for you, this may look more like, this may look more like this for you when you first get started. Um, so what it's gonna do is it's gonna pop up this window in here and this is how we're going to tile our texture. And so this uh, second set of options is going to adjust how this shows up inside of our preview. The first set of options is going to be where we're going to be able to set our options in order to actually make this tile. And so what we wanna do in this situation is we wanna start by turning our texture tiling up so that we can get a better picture of what's happening with this material. So notice when we do this and we look at this over here on the right hand side, you can see these very pronounced seams in here. Well, what we wanna do is we wanna change the overlap of the different tiles in order to make this more realistic. And so the way that we're gonna do that is generally speaking, this is tiling mostly okay on the Y axis and we're having our biggest issues on the X axis. And so what we wanna do here is we wanna come in here and we wanna adjust the X overlap. So you can use this slider in order to do that. And so when you click and drag on this slider, notice what this is gonna do is this is going to stretch out your tiled image. And so what it's doing is it's basically taking that image and it's stretching it um, and distorting it just a little bit inside of your view. And so what we wanna do and what I've been doing is I'm using the distortion to kind of line up the grout lines on these bricks. So the way that I'm gonna do that is I'm just gonna click and drag this and I'm just gonna watch this grout line. And what we want is we want these grout lines to kind of overlap. Right, because as soon as we do that, as soon as we get these grout lines to overlap, then we're not gonna have that pronounced um, difference in here in between your tiles anymore. So I'm just gonna drag this a little bit more until we hit about this point right here. And so when we do that, notice that what that's done is that's kind of taken the tiling of the image and just kind of dragged it along here. Um, and then it's kind of merged them together. So what it does is it blurs the transition in here a little bit. Well now, what that means is that means instead of having this pronounced seam, 
which we had before, which was running about right here. Notice that now the two image are, images are kind of blurred into each other. And you can still see that if you look at these bricks right here. Like notice that this brick um, now kind of uh, merges into another brick that's a slightly different color. You're not always gonna get a perfect result when you're doing this, just because what you're doing here is you're basically expanding an image and then blurring the transition between them. But notice how you don't get that super pronounced vertical seam that you had in here anymore. And so we need to do the same thing on the Y axis because you can see how we still have a seam right here. And the nice thing about doing this with a brick material is that when we do this with a brick material, you can just kind of align the grout lines. So I'm just gonna click and drag on my Y overlap I'm just gonna click and drag this until my grout lines line up again. So you can see how when I do this, when there's nothing, you have a seam, and then when the grout lines intersect or overlap, you can see how this is a much smoother image inside of our, um, inside of our texture. And so the other thing we can do is there's, a no, there's an option in here for edge fall off. And so it's a very uh, fine adjustment. You can kind of see it best if you look like right here where these two bricks merge into each other. But as you adjust this edge fall off, notice how the more you adjust the edge fall off up, the more it blurs the transition between the two images. So it's applying almost a blur effect to this edge. So if I leave this to the left, you can see how this looks a little bit weird because it's almost, it's almost literally just taking this image and kind of cutting it off and starting the image again over here. But if I adjust the edge fall off up a little bit, you can see how what I get is I get this kind of blurred image where these transition. So I'm not getting nearly as strong of a transition effect, or I'm not getting nearly as strong of an edge between the tiles of this image anymore. And so you can see how now, if we zoom out and we look at this, this no longer has those ugly seam lines in here. It does have some repetition, and you're always going to get that when you create a tiling texture. Like you're, um, if this image tiles over and over again, you're always going to see that there's a darker brick and then a lighter brick, and that's gonna kind of show up more. So you can see how if I make this smaller, you can still tell this is an image that's tiling, but it's much more realistic than what we had before. But then once we're done with this, once we've got this set the way we want it to be, all we have to do is click on the button for set maps. So what that's gonna do is that's gonna adjust these maps so that they're finalized. And it's gonna apply this tiling to your height map, your normal map, any other maps that you have in here as well, which is part of what makes this program so powerful. So I'm just gonna click on the button for set maps like this. And then we can click on the button for save project. So what that's gonna do is that's gonna allow us, that's gonna allow us to save our project in a folder. So in this case, I'll just create a folder that's called brick and I'll just name this. I'll make sure that I'm inside of that folder. Then I'll just name this brick texture and click on select. And that's gonna go save all of my maps in there. Well now, if I go back into my 3D modeling program and I add a material, and we'll just call this brick. We'll use the texture images that got placed inside of this brick folder. If I was to preview them, they're gonna look like this. But then, we're gonna double click on this diffuse original and click on OK, then we'll apply it to this face. We'll go ahead and we'll make it a little bit bigger, so maybe a three foot right here. But you can see how now, instead of getting this ugly tiling, that we had over here in our original image, you can see how this one is a much less tiled, much more uh, much more realistic looking brick material that doesn't have those ugly seams in here. So real quick, let's do the same thing with a tile material. So this is a tile material that I've downloaded and you can see how you have a problem right here where when this tiles, your tiles are getting kind of cut off. And so what it means is you don't get a smooth seam in here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna clear all my texture maps and then I'm gonna do the same thing with this tile material. So we'll bring the tile material in. Remember that we need to create our other maps. And then we can click on the button for tile maps. And again, remember you can adjust the tiling preview size over here. You can also move it left and right by using the offset X and Y. But for this one, I'm just gonna do the same thing, right? So I'm just going to adjust this so that my seams kind of end off into each other like this. So now my seams run into each other 
like this. So we're also gonna do the same thing with the Y overlap. And we're just gonna adjust this so all of these tiles look like they're the same size so that you don't have like an extra wide set of tiles and then an extra narrow set of tiles. See how right here, so see how if we do this right here, it looks like this tile is wider than this tile. So we wanna adjust this so that they kind of merge into each other and so all the tiles are kind of the same size. So something like this. And then once we're done, we'll just do the same thing where we'll click on set maps, we'll save our project. And then let's go ahead and let's add that material. And so you can see how, and so you can see how this material also tiles a lot better than the other material did, just due to those simple changes that we made inside of Materialize. So that's where I'm gonna end this video. Leave a comment below and let me know what you thought was this helpful to you. Did you know you could do this with Materialize? I just love having that conversation with you guys. If you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new rendering content every week. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it, and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.